Today, I'm going to be talking about five benefits to praying in tongues and one strong encouragement from the Apostle Paul found in Scripture. First, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, like, comment, hit the bell icon. That really helps us get this out to more people. It is an amazing blessing. Thank you so much for doing so. Um, in one moment, we'll be back, and I'll be diving into the five benefits to praying in tongues and one strong encouragement from Scripture. See you in a minute. All right, we are back. I'm going to be talking about five benefits to speaking in tongues and one encouragement from Scripture. Before we do that, I'll tell you a little bit of my story and my journey is when I got saved, I got radically saved, delivered from drug addiction, and I was on fire for God. I wanted to tell everyone about the Lord. I wanted to read my Bible all day, every day, just spend time in the presence of the Lord. And I told my parents about my radical encounter with God. They were very encouraged because I was the prodigal. I was the, the, the youngest and the fourth child, and I was the one that um, went rogue. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Massive rebellion, wanted nothing to do with God, was in drugs, partying, getting in trouble with the law, all of that. And so they were praying for me continually. They were trying to get me to church. They were sharing the gospel with me and I rebelled harder and harder. And so when I encountered the Lord and was born again, my parents were very happy. They were very excited. They celebrated, you know, the prodigal son coming home, many of my family members, as well as, you know, people at our church that saw what my parents were going through, that knew what they were going through with me. And so when I told my parents about my encounter with the Lord, I told them that I encountered the presence of God. And if you want to hear my testimony, just go to our channel. It's at the top of the channel. It says one encounter that changed my life forever. You can go ahead and watch that. It's quick. It's a 12 minute, you know, um, story or I'm sharing my testimony of how I encountered the Lord. And so you can click that if you'd like, but I told my parents about my encounter with God, how it transformed my heart and how I knew Jesus was real and he's God and what he did for me. And they said, well, were you baptized in the Holy spirit? And at that point, I didn't really know what they were talking about. Um, growing up, I heard my mother speaking in tongues. You know, I've heard a lot about miracles, healings, different things like that growing up. Um, but I didn't really know what they were talking about when it came to the baptism of the spirit. So they told me about the gift of tongues and they told me about the benefits to speaking in tongues, which we'll get into. And they, and they began to share with me, this is what happens when you pray in the spirit. It's all this boom, boom, boom. They're, they're opening up the scriptures to me. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I want to pray in tongues. I want to pray in the spirit. I want to be baptized if I wasn't baptized. And they pretty much told me you can't strive. You can't earn. You can't deserve. Um, this gift of the Holy Spirit, it's like Christmas. And hey, we're, we're, we're in the Christmas season right now. And this is exactly the analogy or the example they gave me. They said, it's just like on Christmas day, receiving a gift that was paid for this gift. When someone gives you a gift, they paid for that gift and now they're giving it to you. And all you need to do is receive that gift. So Jesus Christ, he died. He rose again. He was glorified, fully God, fully man, resurrected, overcame the grave, you know, overcame Satan, overcame sin, and he offered us new life. Totally free gift. None of us could earn it. None of us could deserve it. But then also you see in Acts chapter one and chapter two, Jesus says, I'm going to be with my father. I'm ascending on high and we will, and I will, we will send the spirit of God to you. You'll be baptized and the power of God is going to hit you before you go into all the world. And so Jesus purchased for us the beautiful gift of the Spirit of God so that we could be filled with the Spirit. We could be anointed of the Spirit. We could have communion with God our Father and God the Son. We could walk with them. We could be strengthened in our daily life. We could move in the gifts of the Spirit. We could preach the gospel with boldness and power. And so it's amazing. We can't earn the gift of the Spirit of God. We can't earn the gift of speaking in tongues. We cannot. But my parents said it is a gift. You just receive it. And so I took them at their word with childlike faith. And I went into my room and I just didn't really know what to do besides get on my knees. I got on my knees and I just said, God, I receive the gift of tongues. And I just by faith began praying in tongues. Now, listen, rewind. Growing up, I heard my mother speak in tongues. She, had, she used the same tongue 
over and over again when she would pray over me when I was sick or at night when she would pray over me when I was little. I would hear this language that I didn't quite understand. And she told me a little bit about it, but she used the same tongue a lot of the time. And sometimes there are some variations, but she used this one syllable all of the time. And when I got on my knees and I began to pray um, and speak in tongues, it was very similar to that syllable. So I thought to myself, um, you know, maybe I'm just mimicking my mom's tongue. And all of these thoughts were bombarding my mind. And, um, I began to think to myself, well, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just doing it. Maybe I'm just making this thing up. Maybe I really wasn't baptized in the spirit. All these thoughts are bombarding my mind. And listen, the enemy wants to put these thoughts in your mind. He wants to discourage you from using this gift. So number one, the enemy wants to discourage you from using this gift because it's so powerful. And number two, our mind is a natural mind. And so the things of the spirit go against the natural mind. The natural mind cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. And I'm going to get to a scripture here real quick before I dive into the benefits. And so um, so I just said, you know what? I believe in the benefits. I believe in the power. I believe that it's a gift for me as a believer. And so I just, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, just prayed in tongues and I incorporated that into my prayer life with the Lord. And so one day I was at work. I remember I was at work and I was just walking around from point A to point B, one side of the job site to the other, because I was in construction. And I was just, you know, mumbling to myself under my breath, tongues, and I was praying. And then all of a sudden, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit. I felt the presence of God, which is the power of the Spirit. And out of my mouth, it was like out of your inner man, out of your being flows rivers of living water. It's like a damn burst. And I just began to pray in a tongue and a language I did not understand. And I felt my spirit being strengthened. I felt myself being edified. And I was like, wow, this is what the Bible's talking about. It was so beautiful. It was so glorious. It was supernatural. I was like, whoa, I feel the wind of the spirit on this. This is what the Bible is talking about. And so whether I received it when I was on my knees in my room or I received it in that moment, regardless, I was just by faith, believing like a child, trusting that this gift was for me. Jesus said in the gospels, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, he is not going to give you a scorpion or a stone. He will give the Holy Spirit. The father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So that is a beautiful promise that we have from Jesus himself in the gospels. Um, And so I'm going to read to you a scripture real quick in Corinthians, and I'm going to get into the benefits. And so if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, comment here. I want to hear about it. If you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you're seeking that gift, comment below as well. Like, comment that below. I'll be praying for you to have a very similar encounter. And so comment below. Um, And I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 10 through 16. All right. And it goes like this. This is the Apostle Paul, and he's saying, for to, for to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, talking about the mysteries. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For um, who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit combining spiritual thoughts and spiritual words. I know there's a lot here. Okay. I'm just going to finish up with a few more verses. Then he goes on to say, but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, and he could not understand them, for they are spiritually appraised. Some versions say spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. Who has known the mind of the Lord, that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Who will know the mind of the Lord, unless the Lord himself instructs him? But we have the mind of Christ. That question actually was from is from the Old Testament where it says who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. That's an Old Testament passage that the apostle Paul is quoting here and then the apostle Paul interjects and says fulfilled in the new covenant we are able by the spirit of God dwelling in us we're able to discern the mind of Christ because Christ lives in us. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. Christ lives on the inside of me. Therefore his mind, his thoughts, his emotions are inside of me. I could access these things because I now have the mind of Christ. This is a superior covenant enacted upon better promises. 
So the spirit of Christ lives on the inside of me. His spirit instructs me. He's able to lead me and guide me as I lean into him, as I submit to him, surrender to him, believe in him. I'm walking with him daily and I'm able to have his thoughts, feel his emotions, be led of his spirit. We have the mind of Christ. That is one of the most mind-blowing revelations that the new covenant and the, the new testament through the new covenant really breaks open so that being said the natural mind does not accept the things of the spirit of god and so even though we're baptized in the spirit we have the holy spirit we have the mind of christ we still have a natural mind that often resists the things of the spirit and so that's why when you're praying in tongues you can get thoughts from the enemy or your natural mind might tell you you're just speaking in gibberish you're just parroting your mother's tongue. What are you doing? You're just speaking like all those people at church. Is this really God? Is this really the Holy Spirit speaking through you? Your natural mind resisting the things of the Spirit or the devil and planting lies so that you do not take advantage of this glorious gift. I'm going to share with you one more story before I get into the benefits. But one time I had an encounter and a vision from the Lord. And in that vision, I saw a bunch of things, like gifts that God gave us, and they were on the shelf. And, you know... Um, in the vision, there was like, we were, we were armed in certain areas. We were using certain things that God gave us, but there was other gifts and things that we just had on the shelf and we would take them at times where maybe we felt we needed them. Okay. I'll take that tool today. I'll take that gift today. I'll take that weapon today because I feel like I need that today. But I feel like the Lord was saying that the gift of tongues needs to come off the shelf. It needs to be, we need to blow the dust off of it. Okay. We need to and get the dust off of the gift. We need to arm ourselves with it because the word of God encourages us to pray in the spirit and to pray in tongues. There are several sections where it uses, and I believe that when you're praying in the spirit, it isn't always praying in tongues. Okay. It's not always, you know, when we're in that place of intercession and we're accessing the mind of God and we're praying through things, when God gives us visions or tells us what to pray and we're, and we're praying in it, you know, that, that effectual prayer life where we're hearing from God and we're praying his mind and his thoughts. And we're in that place of intercession that is also praying in the spirit. But oftentimes when the Bible uses the terms praying in the spirit it is referring to tongues. Okay. And so I'm not going to break all that open today. That's not the purpose of the show. But I'm going to show you some scriptures now, five scriptures in particular that talk about the benefit of speaking in tongues. So number one, the first benefit is found in 1 Corinthians 14.4. And it says in 1 Corinthians 14.4 that when we pray in tongues, we edify ourselves. And when I was at work that day and I felt the presence of God and I began to speak in another language, something unknown to my natural mind, but it was empowered and there was wind on it. I felt edified and strengthened in my spirit. For me, I, I want to encourage believers to pray in tongues. I know that many believers don't pray in tongues on a regular basis. We're always praying with our understanding. But the Apostle Paul in this section of scripture, he says, pray with understanding, but also pray in the spirit. He says, sing with understanding, but also sing in the spirit. And so he's saying it's amazing to pray with understanding, to pray in your language in a known tongue. But he also goes on to say, also pray in the spirit, also sing in the spirit. And you will begin to see as you engage God in that way and you pray in tongues, you pray in the spirit by faith, there will be an energy that comes to your spirit. You will be built up in your spirit. You will strengthen your inner man as you pray in tongues. And the scriptures encourages us in that way. All right. So 1 Corinthians 14, 4, we edify ourselves. Do you want to be edified? Do you want to be regularly edified every single day, a strengthening to encourage yourself, to uplift yourself? You know, the you know, David, he, he, he uplifted himself in his language, but he said, hope, oh, hope, oh, my soul, bless God, my soul. He told his soul to hope in God. He told his soul to bless God. But a lot of times we don't have the words, but as we pray in tongues, we are edifying our spirits. So that's number one. Number two, Romans 8, 26 says this. When we don't know how to pray, the Spirit prays through us, praying perfect prayers. And so I'm not, I'm not quoting the exact scripture there, but you can go to Romans 8.26 to verify what I'm saying. But the Apostle Paul is saying that oftentimes he does not know what to pray, and he's groaning 
and he's praying by the spirit, not with his own language because he doesn't know what to pray. How many times have you felt like you had no clue what to pray, but you got into that place of travail. You got into that place of praying in the spirit where you're not praying your words anymore, but you're crying out deep from within. And as you pray in tongues, you're praying by the spirit, which makes it perfect prayers. Imagine praying perfect prayers. Imagine praying the will of God and praying by the spirit of God. Oftentimes we don't know what to pray because like, we're like, well, what should I pray for? What is the will of God? Because the Bible says that if I pray according to his will, then he's going to answer me. And so what should I pray? If you don't know what to pray, pray in the spirit. Pray in the Spirit because the Spirit of God is now praying through you and you're praying the perfect will of God as you uplift these prayers to the Lord. Amen? So that's number two. Number one, you edify yourself when you pray in the Spirit. Number two, um, when you don't know what to pray, you pray perfect prayers in the will of God by the Spirit of the Lord. Number three, it says in Ephesians 6, verse 18 and 19, that we intercede and we make petitions for the saints when we pray in the spirit. So you might be going about your day, you're in your truck, you're in your car, you're driving around, you're walking around the mall, you're doing your thing, you're at the house, you're doing the laundry, you're, you're doing the dishes, whatever you're doing, and you're praying in the spirit. You have no clue what you're praying, but the Holy Spirit knows because he's the one praying through you. And you might be praying for, you know, you might be praying for someone's protection somewhere. Something your natural mind can't comprehend, something your natural mind might not know, but maybe something's going on with your son or your husband or something's going on with a family member of yours or your pastor or someone in your life, a spiritual father or mother, or maybe somewhere in the world, someone you don't know. But the Lord loves to partner with his people to release his promises and purposes and his provisions into the world. You might be praying for a young child in a foreign country. You might be praying for someone with cancer in England. You might be, who knows what you're praying for. But as we pray in obedience to the scriptures, as we use the gift that God has paid for and poured out on us, we are praying and making petitions for the saints around the world. That is beautiful. And you may never know on this side of heaven, you may never know what your prayers effectively accomplish with the Lord. You may never know in this life. But when you see the Lord face to face and you're standing before the judgment seat of Christ, he will let you know based on your obedience, based on your devotion, your partnership with him, what was being accomplished as you prayed in the spirit. That is a beautiful thing. That is such a beautiful thing. I want to partner with the Spirit of God. I want to pray for the saints. I don't know what to pray for my for my friends all the time or my church members all the time. And I don't know what to pray regarding Israel and Africa and different parts of the world. I don't always know the right prayers to pray. But guess what? The Holy Spirit does. And so I want to partner with the Spirit. Partner with the Spirit. Allow Him to pray through you. It will be a beautiful, fulfilling, strengthening aspect of your prayer life not the only way you should pray but a big but a big way so number 4 1 Corinthians 14:2 says we speak mysteries when we pray in the spirit and we speak directly to God kind of touched on this earlier about praying you know according to the will of God and praying perfect prayers we're actually unpacking mysteries as we pray in the spirit and we're praying directly to God oftentimes when we pray in the spirit regularly we are getting revelation more regularly as well because we're praying mysteries and those mysteries go from our spirit to our mind. And so now as we open up the scriptures, we are getting um, you know, more revelation from the scriptures. Or maybe we lay down at night and God's speaking to us through visions and we're getting understanding of scripture. Or maybe, you know, all kinds of things get orchestrated throughout the day. But if you pray in the spirit regularly, I guarantee that the spirit of revelation is going to open up to you in a beautiful way where you'll have more understanding of the scripture, more understanding of what God's saying and doing in a moment because you're continually praying the will of God through prayer. And so uh, number five, the last one, you build up your most holy faith. This is Jude 20 and 21. You build up your most holy faith. Your faith increases as you pray in the spirit. And that is, is an incredible thing. How many people feel like I just don't have enough faith? I just don't have enough faith. Uh, how could I believe God for this? How could I believe God for that? I feel like my faith is even smaller than a mustard seed. 
We've all been given a measure of faith, every single one of us. So you can't say you have no faith because all of us have been given a measure of faith. And Jesus said that all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed to move a mountain. And so, but the beautiful thing is we take the faith that we've been given as a grace gift from God, the very faith of Christ deposited on the inside of us. We take that faith that's been given to us as a gift and we get to partner with the Lord and cooperate with the Lord in building our faith by fueling that faith with the word of God, fueling that faith by praying in the spirit, fueling that faith but through worship and sitting before him in silence and sharing the gospel and praying for the sick and seeing God do miracles and seeing God use you, speak through you, your faith builds and it begins to grow and grow and grow over time. And so um, I told you there's five benefits. Those are the five benefits. Number one, you edify yourself. Number two, when you pray in the spirit, the spirit of God is praying through you, even if you don't know how to pray. Number three, you're interceding for the saints. Number four, you're speaking mysteries and directly to God. Number five, you're building up your faith. And I'm going to end with this. This is an encouragement from the apostle Paul on speaking in tongues. He said this in 1 Corinthians 14, 18. He said, I speak in tongues more than anybody else. Now, the apostle Paul changed the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says in the book of Acts that Paul and the first disciples turned the world upside down with the gospel. Believers and unbelievers were talking all around the world about what God was doing through his church and doing through his people. And so the apostle Paul got radically saved from being a murderous Pharisee to being a devoted, sold out follower of Jesus Christ. And so in that case, in that situation, like he, he, he traveled the world sharing the gospel. He was persecuted. He was imprisoned. He was stoned almost to death and he wound up dying as a martyr, but he wrote a, a huge portion of the new Testament and he planted churches. He fathered churches, you know, like this man, we're still, his, his words are in the scriptures. And so the Holy spirit anointed him to write these letters and we, he's still bearing fruit today because we're singing songs with his words in it. We're preaching script. We're, we're reading scriptures and getting revelation from his words. We're preaching from his words. This man's ministry is still bearing fruit 2000 years later. Okay. And he said, I speak in tongues more than anybody. He was saying this because some people were just only wanting to speak in tongues and not wanted to speak in English when they came to church. That's not, we could really dive into this section of scripture. It's about church order and how to use the gifts. But I just wanted to highlight the point that he says, I speak in tongues more than you. And look at the powerful ministry that came out. Look at the grace infused ministry that came out of the apostle Paul. Look at the fruit that he has bore in his life by the power of the spirit and his devotion to Christ. And so if the apostle Paul thought he needed to speak in tongues regularly, I think you should too. I think I should too. And so um, I want to bless you guys. I'm going to end right here. I encourage you going into this Christmas season and going into the new year, take some time to devote yourself to prayer. Take a little bit of time every single day and you don't need to be in your room for an hour praying in tongues, but as you're driving from point A to point B, as you're in the shower, as you're washing the dishes, as you're just doing, you know, menial tasks that don't require much thought process, you're just kind of knocking things out, getting things done for work, pray in the spirit. It doesn't need to be out loud and it doesn't need to be loud. Um, you could do it quietly. You could mutter it. You could do it to yourself under your breath. So no one around you at your cubicle at work could hear you, but incorporate praying in tongues, repent for not using the gift. If that's you repent for not using the gift and just activate it again. Okay. And so I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy spirit, fill them right now. I pray that you would just grant them the gift of praying in tongues. I thank you, Lord, for even understanding and interpretation in Jesus' name, I pray that they would take the gift off the shelf and they would begin to activate it and um, utilize it in their prayer life. In Jesus' name, fill them right now, encounter them right now in Jesus' mighty name. If you felt the Holy Spirit, you felt encouraged today, comment below. I want to hear if the Holy Spirit's moving on you, if he's touching you, I want to hear your story of how you got baptized in the Spirit. And so make sure to click also in the description section, we've got a video on how God healed my brain, my testimony, um, how also if you've had an abortion, struggling with shame, there's a video connected there. I just had a, a conversation with Chris Garcia about the difference between the presence of God and the anointing of the spirit. And so um, make sure to hit the description section, check out the channel, subscribe, like, comment, and hit the bell icon. Bless you. 
and I'll talk to you next time on Awaken Podcast.